What's up, YouTube? Jeff, your style OG. And on today's video, we're gonna talk about how and why you should be using shoe trees. If you're new to the channel, we release a new video every day at 4 p.m. Eastern, discussing various men's lifestyle topics, such as style, grooming, and dating. I invite you to subscribe and tap that notification bell and join us. And to my returning friends, like Ben Fritz, salute. Now we all know a quality dress shoe can get quite expensive. And to be honest with you, it's one of the items I have no problem you investing a little bit more money in. Invest as much as you can afford in a quality dress shoe. However, if you're gonna invest in a quality dress shoe, doesn't it make a lot of sense to take care of it and maintain it as well as you can? That's where today's topic comes in. We're talking shoe trees. Hands down, it's at or near the top of the list of the things you can use to make a good dress shoe last more than a couple of years, perhaps a couple of decades. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about why you should be using shoe trees, how they actually work and what they do to maintain your shoe, and quickly show you how to use them. So without further ado, let's get into how, and more importantly, why you should be using shoe trees. So let me talk to you about how I practice what I preach. For example, I have these Taboot New York wingtips, one of my favorite shoes. You see me wearing them in a bunch of lookbooks all the time. I had them for a good seven or eight years. Now I spent about 400 bucks on these shoes. That's a nice investment. So I religiously put my shoe trees in them after I use them. As you can see, these shoes look darn near brand new after repeated wearings and years and years of use. After investing $400 in these shoes, you don't think an extra 20 bucks on a cedar shoe tree is worth it? Reason number one why you should be using those shoe trees, because our feet sweat. Why that matters? The number one enemy of leather is moisture, and our feet sweat throughout the day when we're rocking those dress shoes. A good shoe tree, when you use it, is gonna help draw the moisture out, preventing the leather from cracking or breaking down, and the lining from rotting. And that's why I suggest you use a wood, specifically a cedar shoe tree, and not plastic. The wood from a cedar shoe tree draws the moisture out from the shoe, preventing the deterioration of that quality leather shoe. Not only does a shoe tree keep the moisture out of your shoe and prevent it from deteriorating, it actually helps stop that smelly foot odor. When it's drawing that moisture out of the shoe, it's actually drawing some of the odors out as well. Not only are you prolonging the life of your shoe, you're actually making sure it doesn't smell. The second effect of using a shoe tree is to make sure the shoe maintains its shape. Of course, throughout the day when you're wearing the shoe, it's not going to maintain that pristine shape that it started with. At the end of the day, when you throw the shoe trees in, it helps stretch the leather out, helping it keep its proper shape for a lifetime. When you put that shoe tree at the end of the day, it helps stretch the leather back out, bringing it as close to new as possible. So now that we talked about why you should be using a shoe tree, let me tell you specifically what kind of shoe tree you should be using. First of all, no plastic shoe tree. You wanna use a cedar unfinished shoe tree. This is the shoe tree that's gonna draw moisture out of your shoe, help maintain the shoe, and deodorize it. That cheap plastic Ikea one is not gonna draw moisture out. It may help with the shape, but the smell and the deterioration of the shoe, it's not really helping with. Now I want you to think about it. You spend hundreds of dollars on that dress shoe, why not spend an extra 20 bucks on a shoe tree that's gonna make it last for years and years? Well, now, one of my favorite shoe trees, I'm gonna have a link in the description. I grab a lot of mine from Nordstrom. Only $19.95 and they have free shipping. I have shoe trees from a variety of brands, but that's the one I recommend that's cost effective and is gonna get the job done. Now let's get into the nitty gritty of the how, and just as importantly, when you're gonna use the shoe tree. Now this is the easy part. You simply take the shoe tree, insert it into your shoe fully till it gets to the toe. That's it. But to me, it's just as important when you use it. Now I suggest you put it in your shoe no longer than one hour after you take it off when you get home. And you wanna leave it in that shoe for at least 24 hours. This gives the shoe tree enough time to draw the moisture out, reshape it, and do the work in the magic of the shoe tree. Now a question I often get about shoe trees, do I need a bunch of them? Do I need one for every shoe? No, I suggest you don't need any more than two or three. You only really need to leave the shoe tree in for about 24 hours. So if you wear more than one pair that day, you want to at least have two shoe trees to maintain both shoes. But you probably can get away with one pair of shoe trees, to be honest with you. Another question I get all the time about shoe trees, do you use shoe trees on your sneakers? Why, of course I do. Isn't the sneaker made of leather? 
The shoe tree can protect and do the job on your sneakers just as much as it does on your dress shoe. As you can see with this Jordan 1, I've had this for several years, the shape is maintained by the shoe tree. Okay, so there you have it, my guide on how, and more importantly, why you should be using those cedar shoe trees. Let me know in the comment section, do you faithfully put shoe trees in your shoes? As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, hit that like button, helps the channel to grow. And of course, tap the notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos we release every day at 4 p.m. Eastern, and I'll check you out tomorrow.